Hello everybody, welcome back to uh, Viva Mondo webinar. Today we are joined by SMU Lyle School of Engineering. Um, please do stick around, ask us questions throughout the webinar. We are here to help. Uh, we will get to the questions in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen at the very end of the webinar, but please do ask them throughout. We will be here in the background uh, to help with you. Uh, we have the wonderful Alexis Reynolds with us today, who will be here to discuss reasons of why and how you can study engineering at SMU. Uh, a little bit about Viva Mondo and what we do. We are essentially here to help you on to the next chapter of your study abroad life and journey. So any advice regarding reasons, countries to visit, countries to stay in, courses, everything from courses to visas we discuss in and on our website. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Alexis, who will be able to give you more information today. Perfect. Thank you so much. So hi, everyone. Greetings. And my name is Lexi Reynolds, and I'm the Associate Director of International Graduate Admission at the Lyle School of Engineering at SMU in Dallas, Texas. So a little bit about today. Um, we are just going to learn a little bit about SMU and the School of Engineering and then talk about the admissions process and then we will open it up to questions. So let's get started. So SMU or Southern Methodist University is located in the University Park area of Dallas, Texas. Um, so about 10 minutes from downtown Dallas. Luckily within the city, we have two major airports, um, one of them being the world renowned um, DFW airport. So a lot of um, availability for flights in and out of Dallas. Um, one of the really positive things that is going on in the city of Dallas um, is that we are being called the new Silicon Valley. So if you are familiar with California and the STEM industry, um, out there, a lot of those bigger companies are starting to move to Texas. So if you are looking for STEM, um, the state of Texas is really, really great. We have the two um, top cities in the country for um, STEM companies moving to the um, US and to Texas. We also have more Fortune 500 companies per capita than any other city in the US. So a little bit about the history. Um, we were founded in 1911 and we opened our doors to about less, a few less than 500 students about four years later after completing building. Um, and then engineering at SMU started in 1925. So we have a really long history of engineering here um, on campus. So a little bit about our rankings. Um, these are from Niche. Um, we are the 27th best college location, 58th best engineering school in the US, and then 66th best national university. So I wanna talk a little bit about rankings um, right real quick. Some things that you need to know um, is when you're starting to do that search on programs and location and the schools, there's so many things that you start to take a look at. And definitely rankings is one of those. Um, but I want to, to make sure that students also are aware that when you are looking at the best fit for you, you, you definitely need to look beyond those things. You need to look about again, location and the opportunities that the school provides, not only in the academic sense, but everything else outside of that. So, you know, rankings, yes, but then also talking to alumni and current students and working with the admissions offices, those are going to be things that, that help you, you know, with the decision-making process. So let's talk a little bit about our student body. So SMU itself has a little less than um, 12,000 students. And so we're a moderately sized private institution. So, and then within the Lyle School of Engineering, we have about 2,000 students, a thousand of those being graduate students. 
Um, and about 30 of those, 30% 30 of those students are international. Now, when things were, you know, a little bit more quote unquote normal, um, we kind of had that flipped. Um, so our domestic student population at the time was quite a bit smaller, um, but we have the opportunity to, you know, as we start, you know, as the world starts to open back up, students will be able to um, arrive in a more, you know, timely manner um, to be able to, for you to be able to continue your studies. So we'll talk about our, you know, the Lyle School specifically now. So we have five academic departments, civil and environmental engineering, computer science, electrical and computer engineering, mechanical engineering, and then operations research and engineering management. So within these five academic departments, we have about 28 plus programs. Um, so a lot of opportunities for students. So let's take a look at these programs and these departments a little bit more. So first is our civil and environmental department. So we have our MS, MA, and PhD programs within the department. Um, some of the things when researching departments and programs, um, things that you wanna take a look at for most students who are interested in um, obtaining the STEM OPT um, and then doing CPT as well, you wanna look at those Masters of Science or the MS degrees over the um, you know, Masters of Arts. Although we do have a lot of students who are um, involved and do go into the Sustainability and Development Program as well. So just a couple of things that you wanna take a look at. Um, in both our civil and environmental MS degrees, there are areas of concentration um, that kind of focus on some of these areas of research that are mentioned here on the page. So transportation, um, structural analysis, um, treatment and supply of drinking water. Um, one of the things that the department chair likes to talk about is with you know, this particular department that it is kind of a like a living laboratory in a sense. So there's stuff going on on campus. They work with, you know, companies and projects within the city. <clears throat> and then also, you know, around the world, they do projects. So very interesting things going on within our civil and environmental department. So here is our computer science department. It's probably one of, it's probably the smallest department we have within the Lyle School of Engineering. However, it is probably one of the most sought after making it one, is one of the most competitive programs here on campus. Um, so we have computer science, um, cybersecurity, um, and software engineering. So in only a few of the areas of research that are mentioned, so artificial intelligence and cybersecurity um, and much more. So some of the things they do have um, a couple of institutes on campus that students can participate in research, um, but they don't let us know what's going on. So, because they work sometimes with the US government. So you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement um, or an NDA. So we can't ever, we really don't know always what they're working on, um, but there are some exciting things going on here. So one of our largest departments is the electrical and computer engineering department. So um, computer engineering, electrical engineering, network engineering, um, so if some of you have started looking at our website recently, um, the network engineering program used to be our telecommunications and network engineering program. Um, so they just have done some updates to the program and renamed it, but still the same program. So um, some of the fun things that this department is doing is working on drone communications. Um, so we do have a lab where students are um, able to fly drones um, within and, you know, just a contained area, um, but they also are working with, you know, biomedical devices and 
wireless systems. So a lot, again, a lot of opportunities for research. So we also have our mechanical engineering department. Um, so manufacturing management and, and then mechanical engineering. Um, something that students want to, want to take a look at if you are looking at earning a doctoral degree, um, if you, you might have seen on a couple of these pages the, the, P, the PhD um, and then also the DE, so that is a doctorate of engineering. So kind of the difference, if you're looking to earn a PhD, you might be wanting to go more towards um, becoming a professor or working in academia. Um, and then a DE is someone who is wanting to do more research out in the field. You can use both, you know, in and out of the field, um, but there's just a little bit of different research components with both of those. Um, so areas of research, um, thermal science and dynamics and control, manufacturing and design. Um, again, lots of opportunities for students to um, be doing research. And then we have our operations research and engineering management department. Um, one of the things that I'd like to point out about this particular department is that students have the ability to come in with a bit more of a diverse background. So in a lot of our programs, the faculty are going to be looking at um, similar um, degrees coming. So like mechanical engineering, if you have a mechanical engineering degree, like bachelor's degree, and you're going into mechanical engineering, that makes a lot of sense. Um, we do have, so with these students, um, you do have a bit more of an opportunity to not have, you know, the technical degree. So like for example, um, engineering management. So you're gonna be looking at, you know, some of the supply chain operations and management um, and things like that. So kind of a little, I guess, topper to um, our programs is our multidisciplinary areas. Um, so one of the ones that I really, really like to highlight is our dual degree program. Um, and so this is allowing students who are interested in the MS program, so the Masters of Science programs, can be paired with our Cox School of Business one year MBA. So what does that exactly look like? So you're admitted into the Lyle School of Engineering and then you have the ability to then apply um, to the Cox School of Business. So it's two programs, two years, two degrees. Um, and students will then pay the Lyle School of Engineering tuition on top of that. So great opportunity if you're looking to, like you're wanting to do that MBA, but you still wanna be in engineering, this is a great, great program for you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the um, admissions process and things like that. So we admit international students um, two times a year. So in the spring and in the fall, so spring deadline has passed, um, that was September 1st, but our fall um, 2022 application is open and the deadline to submit an application is May 15th. Now, you might say that's a little late. A lot of programs have deadlines beforehand. We do rolling admissions, and so it allows students to have some time to kind of work through the whole process because we know that it's a big, um, you know, this is a big life change and a big decision. Um, so we definitely are want you to be able to, to work through that whole process. Um, we do, however, tell students, you know, the earlier you apply, that kind of helps your timeline a little bit better as well. So let's talk about the admissions criteria. So um, if you were to go on to the Lyle School of Engineering website, 
and look at the grad application and hit apply now, it would take us take you to a third party um, application website. So it's called Engineering Pass. Um, so Engineering Pass allows students to apply to several different um, universities. So if you were to look at mechanical engineering, um, it would show you all the programs. So you would have to indicate that you are applying to um, SMU or Southern Methodist University, and that would take you to our particular applications. Um, you would complete the application and then pay the $75 application fee. Um, and then we will need all post-secondary transcripts. So everything after the high school level um, and we do take unofficial transcripts for the application review. Now, if a student is admitted, then we need the official transcripts to come in. So we're looking at a 3.0 GPA and above. And then, you know, in those, you know, in some of those programs that are more technical, um, they are definitely gonna want a similar background and a similar bachelor's degree. And then we are looking at if the program that you are applying to requires the GRE, it's gonna be in the 80th percentile of the quantitative section. So only the quantitative section is what the programs are going to be looking at. Um, right now we are offering the ability for a GRE waiver. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that later if anyone is interested. Um, Next, we have the statement of purpose. So this is like a one page document on why engineering at SMU. Why you think this program is a good fit for you, what you're looking to do when you're here on campus, what you're looking to do afterwards and how this degree is going to assist you on completing those, you know, the things that you're wanting to achieve. We also have require a resume. So there is no traditional graduate student. Um, and so what that means is we have students who just come from earning their bachelor's degree and go straight into earning a master's degree. We have people who have worked in the field for 20 years um, and are just trying to take their career up a level. So we tell students either an academic resume or a professional resume, um, whatever, can showcase you in the best light. Um, we also require proof of English proficiency from international students. So Duolingo at a 110 minimum, the IELTS is a 6.5 band score, and the TOEFL is an 80. Um, if you have completed a degree in the US or the UK, um, Australia, and a couple of other countries, um, there are waivers for that as well. Letters of recommendation are required for the doctoral applicants. For master's level students, um, they are not a requirement. However, if you feel like your application may not, you know, like your grade point average or your test scores, like those numbers on that paper, if you feel like that doesn't necessarily showcase you in the best light that you're wanting, um, letters of recommendation and that statement of purpose are going to be, going to need to be strong um, to help kind of round out that application. So we've talked about the requirements. So what does the process look like? So you submitted your application um, and until like all the materials, all the required materials. So for international students, it's gonna be all of your scores need to be officially sent to us. Um, and until we those are received and uploaded into your file, they will stay in awaiting materials. So once your application file is complete, it goes into transcript review and then goes into program review where the program coordinator will take a look at your file um, and you know, make their recommendations. Then it's sent over to the department chair and they take a look at you know, the recommendation from the program reviewer and what they have their decision, um, and then take a look at everything as well. Then a decision will be made and it'll be released within 24 hours. 
and students will be able, will get notification via email and be able to look in their student portal to see what that decision is. Um, if a student has been admitted, their kind of next step um, is accepting their offer of admission. Um, so for us, what that kind of looks like is um, no, no, so it's a, <laughs> so when you accept your offer, it starts the I-20 process. So there's no deposit or anything. Um, it just kind of starts you on a timeline. Um, so, and then it's up to the student to get all the other required materials ready to go. So when you're looking at, you know, the academic side of things and you're like, this is a good program for me, um, but also what else is a university, what else is the university doing to support me and kind of help me along the way um, outside of the classroom. So some of the resources and support that I like to talk about are our Heart Center for Engineering Leadership, you know, which gives students, you know, the ability to really take a look at what is going on in our, you know, in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area um, regarding, you know, business and networking capabilities. Um, so the Heart Center does all sorts of um, events for students. So one in particular is Resumania. So students are able to then kind of talk about um, and work with people within the industry and they kind of help tailor your resume to make it the best that it can be. Um, also in the Heart Center, they do a graduate leadership certificate. And so it helps students who are really wanting to take you know, their time here at Lyle up a level um, and works on some of those more soft skills. Um, within leadership that, you know, employers are really, really looking for. Um, and for students who are international and really looking to, you know, extend their time here in the U.S., um, this is probably a really, really great opportunity for you because you kind of get to know a little bit about how employers um, are looking at, at students. And then there's also the industry mentorship program. So you will be connected with um, an experienced engineering mentor um, and be able to you know, work on your connections and um, skills that you can build um, to better yourself during your time here. So this is just um, a couple of pictures of campus and um, some of our students and faculty doing their research. Um, we are one of the most beautiful campuses in the country, um, according to, the, to those rankings that we talked about earlier. Um, and I would have to say that um, after traveling and visiting campuses in a lot of different areas that SMU does definitely have this very um, quaint and connected um, environment and it's great to be a part of the Lyle School of Engineering. So I'm going to open it up for questions. My contact or the easiest way to contact me is through email and that is on the screen. Um, if you're looking to you know, learn a little bit more or want a little bit more of that one-to-one um, -one interaction, um, feel free to email me and we can set up an appointment. But we'll open it up to questions. Okay, thank you, Alexis. First question. Um, could you tell me if you offer any internships alongside the degree? So yes, so um, we do have internship opportunities. So it's going to be working with that the Heart Center that I mentioned. Um, so students do have the opportunity to work with the on-campus um, career center, but then also working with the Lyle specific and engineering specific career center. Um, so students do have the opportunity for internships as well as um, the OPT with the STEM extension. 
Perfect, thank you. Next question. Will there be opportunities to meet others even during the pandemic? Can I travel around the USA at the moment? So that is a great question. Um, so right now, the state of Texas is really open. Um, so we have campus is pretty much, you know, for the most part back to what we would call normal. Um, so students are here on campus. Um, they are, if the faculty member would like the faculty who is teaching their particular class, um, required to wear masks for the safety of students. Um, but for the most part, students are able to come and kind of feel a little bit more at ease. Um, so the difference is it kind of varies from state to state right now with the requirements of you know, the, the mask mandates and the vaccines, but we are able to travel um, back and forth. Um, so I just had family from, for example, family from California come and visit this last weekend. And so they were able to, to travel pretty, pretty easily um, throughout their, their travels here. So they did a really good job about making sure that students feel safe um, and that is our, our biggest concern is making sure that the students feel safe, but we, we know that students are wanting to be, you know, back on campus and back in the classroom. So they did everything that they possibly could to accommodate that. Great to know. And the next question, is the campus friendly towards LGBTQ plus communities? Yes. So, uh, there is, I think our, our university name, so Southern Methodist University, can be um, a little bit confusing to some students um, because Methodist is related to um, the, the church. And so, but we are no longer connected to the church. So we are a campus that is welcoming to all, all students. And we want, you know, students to, you know, feel safe and enjoy their time on campus. So yes, we are very welcoming to those in those communities. Great, thank you. And does the course allow us to work as well? How many hours will I be allowed to work during my stay on campus? So students are allowed to get part-time jobs, mostly on campus, um, about 20 hours a week. So students can either do like on-campus jobs and you have a, um, the ability to look, there is a place where those are all posted. Um, and then students also have the ability to do, um, become graduate research assistants as well as teaching assistants. So which that's done a little bit differently, um, but mostly it's on-campus work and then possibly like the, um, internship opportunities. Okay, and I think you've already answered this question, but um, I don't know if you want to go back to the slide. How high does my English proficiency need to be, and do you accept pure and lingo? Yes, mm, excuse me. So I didn't put the scores on the screen, um, but yes, proof of English proficiency is required. We do accept Duolingo. Um, our minimum is a 110. Okay. Perfect. And would I be able to take extracurricular activities alongside my degree? Do you offer any of these? So students are, there are a plethora of extracurriculars. So there are more than 150 um, student organizations on campus. And, and then you have, you know, your campus community, but then also the community of Dallas as well. And so there's always an opportunity to do something. Um, if you are interested in sports or music or the arts, there are so many things to do. And especially, you know, as we are moving hopefully more and more post pandemic, um, more of these, <clears throat> excuse me, more of these things have started to open up again. Um, so really allowing students to really venture and learn the, the culture around here. Great, and that's part of the university experience, you know, being able to really specialize. Um, next question, can I apply for next year during this round of applications or do I have to wait? 
So the spring application deadline has passed, but our fall 2022 application is open. So you are able to go to engineering pass um, and apply there. And yes, so you can start working through that application process right now. And if you have more questions kind of about that um, or how to navigate that or where to specifically go, you're more than welcome to email me. Brilliant. And do you offer any safety measures with COVID around right now? Must I attend classes in person? So right now, most, <clears throat> most of the classes are back in person. Um, Students, if they are feeling that they want to wear masks, they do have the option to wear masks. Things are a little bit more socially distanced still within the classroom. Um, and then extra cleaning has been enforced still. So there are safety measures still in place, um, not as, as strict as they were <clears throat> a year ago, um, but students also do have the ability to um, work with administration to take classes online if that is how they feel more comfortable. However, being a moderate sized institution, we really talk about the fact that your class sizes are small. And that's even more so at the graduate level. So there are classes where there's maybe five students. So, you know, there's, we have, we have the ability to come back a lot sooner than a lot of other institutions. Like we have been, like we had students on campus fall 2020. And so it was a little bit of a different setup, but ever like students had the ability to come back. Perfect. And lastly, on to our last question of the day. Um, what would you say Dallas is unique for in studying engineering? So I would say it's the opportunities that you have for networking. And, um, you know, if you're looking at, you know, STEM degrees and engineering degrees, you really want to, and especially when you get at the higher levels of your, you know, education, you're really trying to narrow down what your focus is, but you're also trying to, you know, move in a way that's going to, you know, put you ahead and want to achieve the goals that you're trying to achieve. Um, and in the city of Dallas, you know, um, Texas Instruments is right down the road from us. Um, we have, each department has an executive board. And these people are people from Google and Microsoft and other companies that you definitely are, you know, we all know and we want to start taking a look at um, when you're starting to look at what your career goals are. Um, so with, with students, um, I tell them like, you know, really, really focus on, again, yes, the rankings are important, but you want to look at all those tiny little things that are going to help you specifically. Like, what faculty are on campus? What research are they doing? Does it match up with yours? Because we see students a lot of times, you know, well, I heard about this school and it's a really, really good school, but nobody's doing my research, but I still applied there and I got in and I might go. And then those are the students who usually end up transferring somewhere else. So really reach out to the resources like, you know, people within admissions like myself, um, we can we can do a lot to help you kind of navigate that process. You know, meeting. You know, we have webinars with student panels and you know meetings with faculty, and so you know to try and make you as informed and to be able to make the best decisions that you can for you, um, and to be as successful as possible. Perfect. Thank you so, so much for the questions. Um, 
thank you to all of the students who joined today um and also for the questions they've been really brilliant and quite interesting and very very um and again any last words for you next week um i am just here to to help and assist you and really look forward to working with you Thank you so much. All of the information is on the screen for any contact and Alexis will reach out to you um, post the webinar. So this will be sent to you all as well if there are